Worldwide Hippies presents Hippie News and Stuff with Winston Smith and the Worldwide Hippies News Team. Welcome to Hippie TV News and Stuff for the week of June 13th. Brought to you by WorldwideHippies.com, your website for news and information without any of the corporate fog. I am Winston Smith. But first, our top story. From MangaBay.com, Rash of murders threatens to silence environmental and social activism in Brazil. On May 24th, environmentalist Jose de Silva and his wife Maria were gunned down near Mara Par, where the couple worked in a sustainable extractive reserve. Only three days later, another prominent activist was killed. He was the leader of the Amazon Peasant Association. In the fight for sustainability and corporate accountability, the total of activists murdered has reached over 1,500 known and possibly as many as thousands of unrecorded murders in past decades. With multinational corporations operating with what seems like full impunity over the last decade, this may be the last showdown for indigenous people and indeed the whole planet in regards to who will own and exploit the rainforests of Brazil. The amount of rainforest being destroyed by multinational corporations is growing so fast that if not stopped now, one of the world's most productive oxygen-producing environments will be past the point of recovery by the end of this decade. When small gains by environmentalists and indigenous people were made in late 2010, the multinational corporations through corruption, kidnapping, extortion, and murder stepped up the rate of land rape with, without replanting by some 500%. A disclaimer here. By showing the corporations and their phone numbers, Worldwide Hippies is not suggesting that you swamp them with calls or visit them at their corporate offices with shit on your shoes, nor do we condone the pummeling of executives with balloons full of green paint or anonym anonymously hacking their computers. Our next story. When she isn't patting the fanny of Crown Prince of Bahrain or undermining the Arab Spring Revolution in Egypt, Libya, Yemen, Syria, and other places, Hillary Clinton has been globetrotting on the taxpayers' money to lobby for herself to be the head of the World Bank after the current president steps down next year. Rutgers reported last week that U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has been in discussions with the White House about leaving her job next year to become head of the World Bank. The former first lady and current DNA collector for the CIA quickly became one of the most influential women in global crime after she began her tenure at the State Department in early 2009. All I can say is, if you think Haiti was fucked up before, wait till Hillary controls the money. The few million that Bill Clinton scammed from the Haitian Relief Fund really was nothing. Look for Haiti to be renamed Isle of Rodham in late 2014. And here's P.E. Nolan with her report, Appalachia Rising and Friends of Blair Mountain. What the hell's going on in wild and wonderful West Virginia, Trish? Hi, Winston. Thank you. Saturday, June the 11th, over a thousand people marched up Blair Mountain in West Virginia calling for labor rights, sustainable jobs for Appalachian communities, and the preservation of a national historic site in danger of destruction by mountaintop removal. The march began in Marmot, West Virginia, with about 350 people following the route traveled by Union organizers in 1921 on the way to Blair Mountain. Over 10,000 coal miners fought with local police and thugs hired by the mine owners in order to end the company town system that turned workers into wage slaves. President Harding ordered the U.S. Army to intervene on behalf of the owners and used planes left over from World War I to drop bombs on the workers. The military broke up the demonstration, but the battle raised awareness of the dangerous conditions facing miners in the coal fields of West Virginia and sparked America's early labor movement. Blair Mountain was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 2009, but was delisted a couple of months later because the owners got pissed. Um, no mining has taken place on the historic battlefield yet, but Massey Energy holds permits to destroy the area with mountaintop removal. Uh, Massey Energy was directly responsible for the explosions last year in Mount Cole, West Virginia, killing 29 miners. 
challenging corporate control so that communities can develop a sustainable future is an uphill climb, but Appalachia Rising and Friends of Blair Mountain are going the distance. Back to you, Winston. Again, that's Appalachia Rising and the Friends of Blair Mountain. Check them out online. Thank you, Tricia. You can see P.E. Nolan each week here on Hippie TV News and stuff with her activism reports. Kenneth Wright had a rude awakening last Tuesday morning when a team of 15 officers sent by the U.S. Department of Education stormed through his California home, reported KXTV. Wright claims that officers then placed him in handcuffs and forced him into a squad car where he remained without counsel for six hours. Although it was originally reported that the raid was due to the unpaid student loans his wife had taken out, that claim has since been refuted by the Department of Education. Yet the Department of Education has no information what crime was being investigated and says it might involve fraud. Might. Actually, the Department of Education was surprised by the media coverage of this home invasion and was not scripted to handle the questions. No charges was filed and Kenneth Wright was released after the armed agents tore up his house. It may seem like overkill that the United States Department of Education has police authority to order full-scale raids, but they do. The department was given that right under the Homeland Security Act in 2002. Last year, the Washington Post reported that the Department of Education purchased 27 brand new shotguns. In a statement explaining their purchase, the department stated that they are responsible for the detection of waste, fraud, abuse, and other criminal activities involving federal education funds, programs, and operations. When asked why the rifles might be used to shoot people with default student loans, the Department of Education did not offer any more details. I'm an asshole, yeah. asshole of the week. And this week it goes to G.W. Obama for the sleazy way he brought in the Crown Prince of Bahrain to the White House and the hypocritical statements welcoming and supporting him. On June 7th, the New York Times and Washington Post did not, I repeat, did not report Bahrain's Crown Prince Salam bin Haman al Kahafi's White House meeting with Obama, the equivalent of welcoming a serial killer into the United States. After the meeting, a shameless statement by the White House and Hillary Clinton expressed strong support for the Crown Prince's ongoing efforts to initiate the national dialogue and said that both the opposition and the government must compromise to forge a just future for Baharainis. That was Hillary Clinton's double speak for keep up the good work for our Saudi buddies. In fact, since mid-February, when nonviolent protests began, Obama and America's media largely stayed silent about the daily human rights abuses in Bahrain, including murder, torture, mass arrests, bogus accusations, and show trials, convicting innocent civilian men and women for courageously wanting democratic rights in a nation without them. Just one case in point. A Bahraini student poet, 20-year-old Arat Akamazi, arrested in March for publicly reading her critical poem at a Manmana rally. Amnesty International requested the president to ask about her case. She was charged with incitement to hatred of the regime and reportedly was tortured in detention. Without mention from Barack Cheney about her case, conviction is virtually certain as are years in prison for her peacefully expressing her views. But on June 7th, while he had the opportunity, White House discussions excluded her case and others, focused solely on U.S. regional interests, backing of one of the most ruthless, despotic regimes and U.S. ally. For sacrificing the brave activists in Bahrain on the altar of hypocrisy and reinforcing the U.S. commitment to supply the weapons of death to evil kings, princes, and corporate interests, you, President Barack Obama, the biggest disappointments in Santa Claus, is worldwide hippies, asshole. Of I'm an asshole. News. Please share this video and visit WorldwideHippies.com often for news and information updated every two hours. And visit our store or make a donation to help Worldwide Hippies keep up the howl for peace and justice. And we will see you here next Monday.